Hey guys, Omni here. We are back for episode three of season five of Cobra Kai. Uh, Chosen's infiltration mission didn't last quite as long as I imagine they had hoped and as much long as I had thought, but the way they brought it down, the way that Terry Silver foiled that whole scheme was brilliant. I love the way that they uh, worked that out and executed that. It was, uh, it was just a fun interaction to begin with and just a smart way for him to feel out this uh, sensei who was uh, getting a little close. Um, on top of that, the whole interaction with him and sticking the senseis on him once he's been found out was a, was a great little ploy. Also, surprising scenes between Chosen and Tori with them connecting and relating as we got a little bit of backstory for Chosen that we hadn't seen before. I really like that. That was unexpected, and uh, it definitely makes me curious to see where Tori's going to go from here because it... It's definitely shifted course already from the first episode of where we left her off at the end of last season. So I, I'm definitely keeping my on, eye on her right now. And then Miguel found out his mom was not that wrong or far off regarding his father as he shows his hand when Johnny and, and Ravi are snooping around in those FBI shirts and his security detail thinks that they are actually with the FBI and, you know, take pay no mind to the female body inspector thing on the back. But yeah, uh, w the suspicious timing of that makes him suspicious of Miguel. His paranoia sets in. He freaks out, t runs off with Miguel and starts dubbing his whole life secrets on him and just really shows that he's not this picture perfect uh, man that he's kind of that he at least Miguel was seeing when he was in public with his family. And we see, well, he truly even feels about what he, how he, how much he values them at all. It was really interesting. Uh, and then a touching reunion between um, Miguel and Johnny. We'll see how that plays out in the ride home with uh, Robbie being in the mix. But guys, it was a great episode. So we're going to go ahead and hop into this one. If you want to see the full length reaction to this one, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access as well. Helps support the channel, helps us grow and improve the reactions that come to you guys here on YouTube. It is in watch along format, so just sync up your own footage with the time code and see my reaction to the entire thing. You get the same thing for all the other shows we cover here on the channel. You also get to suggest and then vote on what movies we react to. We also have monthly Q and A's, behind the scenes footage. Try to make it worth your while since you are going out of your way to support the channel. But of course, I know I'm going to do that. And a simple way can help us out is by liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing these videos because it really does go a long way with helping the channel grow here on YouTube. But if you're new, if you're tuning in for the first time, I hope you enjoy this reaction. And if you do, I hope you hit that subscribe button and leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. With that all said down the way, guys, let's hop into episode three, Playing With Fire. Here we go. You might have some old friends to call upon, but not as many as me. That is true. <laughs> we still got Julie waiting in the wings. If you continue down this path, nothing in your life will ever be the same again. You're playing with fire, Danny boy. And I am gasoline. Oh. Dude, I'm loving Chosen, man. More so, every moment, every scene. What did that giant Bond villain want? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Breakfast that looks is... Looks so good. Oh, wow, we're back already? I wanted to see that car ride, damn it! Sorry, I'm late. Graffiti's a bitch to clean off. You should see my van. It should be illegal to deface someone else's property like that. It is. <laughs> well, this looks different. Everything okay with you and Robbie? Yeah, really good. Ride home was a little quiet, though. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Okay, I, I need comfort food, too. No, oh, what happened? Did you get pwned in Fortnite again? Why have you been acting so weird lately? Is this because another one of your boyfriends ran away? <laughs> You know, he said he'd call upon old friends. Then we call old friend first. Do you know any old friend of Silva? Oh, are we gonna call Barnes? You just bought yourself a champion. <laughs> oh, please tell me we're calling Barnes. Mike fucking Barnes. Please, do it. Oh. And then Julie. I know somebody in the comments when I say her name is gonna be like, eh, 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 eh. but Julie. I felt sick a lot lately. I thought it was distress, but Johnny, I, I'm a couple of days late. Oh, hot damn, Johnny, you're an idiot. 
<laughs> How? We use protection. It's not 100%. These things can happen. I'll pull the van around. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I should drive. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He's like so shaken up. Sweet. Thanks, Roar. Tell Rico I say. Nice. It's a lotus flower. It symbolizes a new beginning, which is what I have now. Besides, the Reaper is kind of a bitch to cover up, so a giant flower is the only real option. It works. L looks good, man. Is that Sam? She finally takes back? Yeah, says she wants to uh, talk tonight. What did she say exactly? We should talk tonight. Oh, uh, does it sound good? We should talk is code for... I, I want to break up. What, it is? What? Not necessarily. <clears throat> Moon is really big on communication. Maybe Sam does just actually want to talk? No, no, we... <laughs> Dude, I love the gang being back together. Desperate. But cute. He knows he's oh, in deep Oh, wow. Shit. This is so funny. <sighs> Dude, that's bad. There's not even an emoji. Yeah, man. <laughs> That is how I read these things, man. The hyper analysis is real, especially with text, man. You gotta let them know the vibe and the tone of it, cause they you can read words a thousand different ways. And here he comes, yo! Roddy's bad boy. Yeah, he does not look so bad to me. That guy tried to kill me once. You don't forget or forgive something like that. Uh, well, hello. Except you, you and I, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> he said the same shit about not being able to let go of Johnny's rivalry while standing next to Chosen. I was like, come on, Daniel, you are so blinded in so many ways. I think Chosen's the literal biggest hurdle he's ever went over, but like he's got these weird like exceptions. Please be an anger management counselor. Or a hitman? What the fuck? Ansel? Good for cutting pipe. That one, good for cutting bone. Looks like he's got some goons working for him. Uh, easy for me to handle. No, I don't want you getting in. They are completely gonna fuck this up. This is not what it looks like. I know it. I can't wait to see how this goes sideways. This? is a self-actualization pod. So like a sensory deprivation tank. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't call them that anymore. It's not about deprivation. Oh my God, fuck off. But I'm still gonna pass. I have would... nightmares about drowning in shallow bodies of water. Wow. Really interesting. I think about the same thing with large bodies of water, but I've always wanted to try one of those things out. I got you having the charm bracelet here, plus a charm for every fight we have. She can barely lift her arm now. I'm just looking for something special for my girlfriend. Is it a birthday, an anniversary? He I fucked up. Without telling her during the biggest <laughs> party of That's a new one. How much is that? The octopus? Ah, uh, two billion dollars. It's perfect. That's like 200, 300 probably. It. Actually, it's been reduced. Two. Great, how much? After tax, $182. Hey, I might not be too, too far off with the original price. Tentacles. With fewer tentacles. <laughs> that is not an octopus, dude. Coaster. Yeah, it's good to be back in business. Just like old times, right? Hey, don't worry about me. Dude, this is so funny. Ah, oh, flew in from Japan. Wow, that's dedication. Is it a furniture what store? That scares me. For the saws and stuff. I'm finished with them, they're gonna be unrecognizable. And you know, I think I know exactly how to do it. Interior designer. I'm gonna start by cutting off their legs. Carpenter. Let's get down to brass tacks. This is so fucking funny. You owe me that much after what happened last time. Oh yeah. And <laughs> those kids are in for a big surprise. Bars, no! Listen to me, you son of a bitch. I'm not gonna have you or your ponytail pin play one finger on any of our kids. Daniel LaRusso? You got that right, shithead. You hear me, you sick bastard? <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, who is this? And what happened to Michael? Who's this? Michael. Is everything okay, Mr. Bruns? I heard yelling. Michelle? Yeah, I promise I will have the Japanese cedar chairs done by the time the school opens. Yeah, and I'm gonna send over a couple of my guys to pick up the Florentine table. 40% commission. Done. 
What's going on here? He should be asking that. You work in a furniture store? Daniel, I own the furniture store. Dude, I, I do kind of still wish he was like an anger management counselor, like uh, Sean Kanan had kind of like posited for his own like head cannon future for him, but it's all good. There is a lot of work to do before your little blessing arrives. Let's get to it. Oh, he's trying. Dude, get a doll or put a bundle of cabbages together, something. Because you need to look in every nook and cranny for things like mold, pests, and other hazards. Oh God, in here? Oh no. Oh no. Dude, no, put, put, put your mask back on. The beer could wait. Daniel, if there is one guy in this world that doesn't owe me an apology, Believe me, it's you. Man, I have wanted to apologize to you so many times. I, I guess I was worried that it would have triggered something or whatnot. You know, after the All Valley Tournament, my, my life was ruined. I mean, I was lost. I was banned from karate, which was all I knew. And one day I'm moving furniture and I meet my future father-in-law. He showed me that I could do something with these hands other than fight. Something about taking a piece of sycamore and just creating something that a family can sit around at a holiday and... He's gonna not taint this, man. He's gonna let him stay. About a 180. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Hey, what about you? Huh? I've seen your commercials, you know, chopping down prices. I'm just really happy that things have worked out for you. Oh, well. Yeah, well, it's... They actually aren't working out so great lately. <sighs> that gives me so much, like, joy. Sam, what are you doing here? I'm not sure. I'm supposed to be figuring out who I am. What do you mean? You're LaRusso 2.0. Aw, oh, yeah. The... Sam, you're one of the girls. You're the girl who broke my heart. What everybody else says she is. Sam. I know exactly who you are. Hmm. I love this for Sam. Like, say what you will about the things she's done or whatever. Her arc is interesting. I love it. Like, what the hell? Ah, oh, dude. Love it. It's the part of her that's lost herself to, like, this darkness. Ah, oh, I like it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, she's had such an identity crisis, her in entire existence in the show. I love that she's trying to figure out who she is. Wasn't it enlightening? What'd you see? The dark side of herself. Mrs. Silver finally got what he was after. Not yet. Not if I have anything to say about it. Is there anything you could tell me that might bring this guy down? I need something. I, I, mean, I haven't even seen him in years. I'm actually kind of relieved. It's nice to know there are some ex-Cobra Kai out there who actually don't want to get in a fight with me. <laughs> Technically, he wasn't Cobra Kai. No to find me. <laughs> Look at you, man. You're looking good there. He was just a hired gun. Oh, no. Chosen, damn it. The misunderstandings continue. We shall turn no mercy. Oh, no. Did he just break his leg? Oh, God damn it. Dude. I don't care. We got a fight out of it. Ooh. <laughs> what the hell, Daniel? This is just a giant misunderstanding. If this is misunderstanding, you better call ambulance. Oh. <laughs> It's either paint thinner or a pesticide. We're both. You want some milk? I got a whole fridge full of it. I got a new couch. New. I got new everything. We haven't spoken in a while, and honestly, I'm not even sure what I'm supposed to say. How about the truth? Hmm. We all get shit wrong sometimes. Some of us get it wrong a lot. If you own up to your mistakes, you always have a shot at making things right. 
You don't have to have it all figured out. Just be honest with her. See where it goes from there. That's actually some really good advice. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. Uh, once again, I'm sorry, oh. Mike. I mean, Silver has us all on edge. <sighs> I can see that. <sighs> Back in the day, Silver had this shady ass attorney. I mean, oh wow the paperwork detailing the terms of one teenager terrorizing another. Wait, he made you sign a contract? I mean, yeah. put it in writing. But I did promise me 50% of Cobra Kai. Dude! I mean, I might be able to dig up that attorney's name. Uh, I see you liking that tufted blue suede. <laughs> How much? Well, it's normally 1200 but what the hell? For 15 you, Two grand. Uh, <laughs> Damn, man. I wonder if that's uh, the extent of Barnes' involvement. ASAP when you get this message. Thank you. We haven't seen Amanda in a bit. In a, in a minute. Hopefully he calls us back. Oh, he actually bought the couch. Don't get blood on the couch. <laughs> Where is he putting it? Oh, Daniel's dinky car. Oh, it's not a dinky car, but it's not made for a couch. I really respect you for taking the time that you needed to find yourself. But she's got to do the same right now. I'm not okay right now. And I don't think I will be until I figure this out for myself. And I just need to take the time to do that. But it doesn't mean that we can't still be friends. Mm, I get it. Look, I understand. What's best for you always you know that she needs to take that time for real she's been pulled a thousand different ways i mean we've saw a fucking visual of it damn oh miggy i oh Nope, 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 nope. Hold on to that. What's going on? Dude, he did a damn good job. Did you know that babies can hear music in the womb? I adjusted the headphones to fit around your stomach. <laughs> There's some Sabbath in there that you could put a metallic or a dark in the Metallica voice. Our child, do whatever it takes. <laughs> I couldn't wait. I took the test. And? All right, whatever it says, I'm ready. Good. Because she's not pregnant. We're having a baby. Oh, okay. I was like, is I was like, is this gonna be for not? Badass. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Robbie and Miguel have no choice but to be family now. I I you how's that gonna go though? Give me a call back ASAP when you get this message. Thank you. Oh, no. Wow. I warned you. First, I'm going to deal with my old friend. And then I'll deal with you. I told you not to play with fire. Terry is just something else, man. No. No. Don't. Dude, I feel so bad for Barnes. I'm so glad they went the sympathetic route, like the reformed route. Because honestly, like after what happened, he wouldn't be able to do anything after that. And it's definitely being betrayed by Terry in the end. We, I feel like we could have assumed that their relationship wasn't going to be maintained. At least not in that way. But I like, I like the direction that they took that, the way they like turned his karate and the use of his hands into a gift for creation to reform him in a very, very interesting way. I loved that. It was so good. And then the misunderstandings, like the, the conversations, the saws based on what we know about Terry and what he remembers about Mike Barnes and the, the crazy shit he did. 
Man, my hair keeps getting in my face. And then like overhearing just out of context conversations and stuff like that, it did make it seem like he was like this shady, skeezy hitman or something, especially with the way he was all dolled up and dressed and stuff. Um, I, I love that. It was great. And then the misunderstanding with Chosen coming in out of context and then starting that fight just so we could, if we're going to have Barnes, we can at least have him throw down a little bit while we have him. And... It was uh, it was just a charming little moment. I love that entire back and forth, and especially Barnes's apology to Daniel and like the way he addresses like their history and their past and why they haven't reconnected since then. It's a great little thing. And then piping up the whole thing like we saw in part three, where he did sign that contract and stuff like the agreement to like get half of Cobra Kai with w once he won. You know, that does exist, so I'm hoping with this going on, maybe he's able to actually find that and dig that up. But yeah, he, uh, Terry warned Daniel about c continuing to press these buttons, but holy shit, burning Barnes's place? Not even attacking Daniel or his dealership or his home or anything like that, he went after Barnes. But Danny Boy's next, I have to imagine. That's crazy, man. But I love it. It's so mustache twirly and amazing and i love that he got called out as like a straight bond villain earlier that was that was just a great little moment with him at the country club um and then miguel trying to figure things out the back and forth with his pod and sam's pod as they are both trying to help them through in the very different ways giving different advice as he's trying to patch things up and she's trying to figure out where to go and like sam doesn't want this to be the case she does love miguel she does still want to be with miguel but She's broken right now. I wouldn't even say she's broken, but she's she doesn't un, she doesn't know her function, how she fits in. She's only lived her life by other people's expectations of her. Like her father be like, "You'll run to the dealership one day. You're going to be Miyagi Do. You're going to take over the dojo. You are LaRusso 2.0." You know, it, she's grown up with that over her head. And then there's the karate aspect of her that is like taken over her life and dominated her. There's the part of her that is t was uh, is just taken by this uh, conflict with Tori. There's all these different aspects of her personality that are just being twisted and pulled in so many different ways. And she's like a lost puppy, really, in the end of the day. Like she doesn't have a direction like we saw glimpses of that last season too when they're talking about Miguel's college where is he's going to go and she's just like I, 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 and then they got the Daniel made the joke about oh she, she, she doesn't go to college she's going to take over the dealership or whatever and like there's all these little things that are just like she's no decision's been her own really outside of like dating Miguel and even that has like led to some confusion in her identity and what she's doing because he's also mixed up with all this karate stuff. Also mixed up with the feud between her father and Johnny and Kreese and all that. Like he's attached to all of these other things. So like until she can confront what is cracked in her, and we've seen that too. Like I think that vision she acknowledged, just, it wasn't Tori in that darkness. It was her. She created that villain out of Tori. And that part of Tori is now latched onto her and it's destroying Sam. It's the thing that's like how Noret, like we saw her a few episodes ago where she was just rewatching that fight. She's like fixated on that loss on Tori uh, beating her out in that moment. And again, devaluing her, like breaking down what she thinks of herself. Like she's a character that I know gets a lot of hate and like I understand the frustration with some of her decisions She's done some things that is just is definitely not likable or right for that matter, but like she's a really good character so far. <laughs> um, everybody is really, but especially in these last, I, I'd say two seasons. So far, this one, the last one, and bits of three, I'd say like Sam has had this journey that has been really intriguing. I'd say the first two seasons, it was kind of straightforward. She was coming out of her shell. She was just kind of like melded in with her friends and all that. You know, she was, and then, you know, she was being drawn back towards the karate. She was just your typical Valley girl at that point. And then season two was her becoming Daniel's basic successor. And then the transition 
away from that, like she's got this like whole, she's got a, a literal arc going on and I love it. Um, and then Johnny's whole thing with him trying to be a proper father this time around, that's beautiful. And then Miguel at the end of the day coming to Johnny and Johnny just giving him actually some of the best advice I think ever has come out of Johnny's mouth. It really got me. That scene, it got me, man. It really did. And at the end of the day, I understand Sam making the decision she did. And it sucks for Miguel. But it is what she needs. And that doesn't mean that once she's figured things out, things might not work out. They could get back together. Who knows? Maybe they won't. Sometimes you just don't. But regardless, it's not healthy for either of them to be in this situation or to force it while she's still uncertain of who she is. So I get it. It's gonna, it hurts, it's gonna suck, but we'll get through. But Johnny's gonna be a dad again. He's got a step, he's basically already got a stepson already with Miguel. He's got a son, son mending that relationship and then he's going to have this new child coming into his life, bringing all of that together. Ah, oh, it's wonderful, man. This is only the third episode. We still have seven more of these. This is insane. Let's see, is there anything else I'm forgetting right now? I think I touched on everything. If I forgot something, just let me know. And that goes for any of the episodes. If there's something I forget to touch on, cause uh, sometimes I just lose track, like when I'm going through everything in my head just immediately after the episode, cause sometimes it goes by so fast or sometimes episodes are long and I forget certain little aspects and beats that happen within them. Oh, Hawk getting that tattoo, covering up the Reaper. Again, trying to bury that persona he's built over the last couple of seasons and really commit to that redemption that he's got. Getting the Lotus tattoo and the symbolism there within. I, I, I really like that. That was a nice touch. But guys, that's all I got for this episode. So I'm going to pass it off to you all. So sound off in the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Make sure to stick around, subscribe, because we will be reacting to the remainder of the season each and every day until we are caught up. Uh, remember, if you want to see the full-length reaction, check it out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access as well. And speaking of, before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Sherrod, Ryan, Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Vane, Yori, Corey Scott, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Melita, Robert Anguiano, and Raven McCann. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. That's it for this episode, guys. And remember, before we go, Cobra Kai never dies. Take care.